Well, greetings. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Wednesday evening service for Faith and Victory Church. I'm sorry we're starting a little bit late. We had a a little miscommunication on uh, timing and so forth, but uh, <laughs> that is entirely my fault. Uh, so, glad you could join us in any case, and that uh, we are live here. I'm still getting a few things tweaked as we get uh, set up here. So if you'll bear with me for just a moment, we'll get that done. All right. Uh, I did want to mention that we will be having regular Wednesday evening services here online. Uh, pastor has asked me while their uh, Pastor and Miss Jamie are taking a little time off. Uh, to have services here on Wednesday nights, so we'll be developing some things as we uh, teach on Wednesday nights. And I want to talk about the power and the influence of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life. It'll it'll kind of dovetail with uh, some of the things that Pastor has been teaching at uh, church on Sundays, which, by the way, I encourage you, if you are in the High Point Greensboro, Piedmont area, that you come on out to our Sunday morning services, or Sunday actually afternoon services, um, at New Life Family Church. We have a, a map on the website now, fbc.org, where you can uh, see how to get there. We meet at 12.30 on Sunday afternoons, uh, so almost morning, close. Uh, so anyway, I would encourage you to come on out and get into those those services, those messages, and then join us here on Wednesday nights. Now, I do want to mention that we have a building fund that we're still con uh, contributing into. I encourage folks that do want to contribute to the building fund, don't think that just because we reached our initial goal of 65000 uh, that we are now done. <laughs> no, we still are looking for a building, and we're looking at buildings. Some of them uh, are quite a bit more than what we originally were looking at, and so we need to keep building that building fund up. So we're building the building fund. So I encourage you to uh, continue to pray about contributing toward that. It's a tremendous cause, and uh, Faith and Victory Church has not had a permanent building in many, many, many years. Uh, and so we are really excited about getting into a permanent building uh, for the ministry. So take note of this uh, URL, this address, fvc.org slash building. And uh, also, if you'd like to contribute tonight in the regular offering, I encourage you to use your Square Cash app at Dollar Faith Victory Church. You can send contributions to that uh, address in the Square Cash app. Or you can use PayPal and send it to donations at fvc.org. And uh, both of those are available for your online giving. We also have a link on the website fvc.org you could click that link the uh, giving link easy giving link got a big easy button there and uh, you can give through that portal as well so lots of different ways lots of opportunities to give into the ministry and i tell you what you will find that we are good ground here at faith and victory church to sow your seed so uh, i trust that people are joining us here um, uh, we are live, as I said. I'm still checking a few things just to be sure that we're where we need to be. But let's go ahead and get into the scripture. Let's go to Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. Uh, this is a situation in the early church. This happened very, very early with the early church, and, uh, I want us to see the influence and power of the Holy Spirit in the lives of believers in this situation. It says, In those days where the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. 
when the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It's not reason, or we would say it's not reasonable, that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost, note, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Now, the business they were talking about here is not the business aspect of the church. I came from a Southern Baptist background, and we were taught that these first deacons were appointed to take care of all the business of the church. Anything that had to do with business, the deacons took care of it. Pastor couldn't be troubled with it. Uh, that's not what it's talking about here. This business is specifically what it's talking about. is, And that was an issue as to whether the Grecians or the Hebrews' widows were being taken care of when they gave out the food. This was a helps ministry. And what the ministry gifts were saying is, brethren, we shouldn't be doing the handing out of food and determining who's getting their food and all that. The helps ministry should be doing this. We as the five-fold ministry ought to be uh, studying the Word of God, ought to be ministering the Word of God. And I want you to think about this. In today's church particularly, as I said, coming out of a Southern Baptist church, if the leadership, <laughs> if the pastors were to turn around and say, hey, you guys take care of this, we're going to continue to study the Word of God, would we have the same attitude that they had here? If you notice, it says, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the Word, and verse 5 says, and the saying please the whole multitude. I often wonder if this were the typical denominational church of today, would that saying please the whole multitude? Because there's been a whole lot of folk that think that the ministry gifts are the ones that ought to be take, taking care of the mundane, if you will, uh, supportive areas of ministry. Sweeping the church, cleaning the church taking care of the widows getting fed, all of this. When in fact, here, it says that the laity, if you will, or the congregation, thought that it was a pleasing thing, a good thing, that the ministry gifts dedicated themselves to the Word and to prayer, essentially took care of the spiritual aspects and the leadership of the ministry, and that the lay people should be taking care of these supportive areas of ministry. Now, today, the supportive areas of ministry are a little different. Today, we may say the sound system, or cleaning the church, or the children's ministry, you know, keeping up with the kids, uh, making sure they get to their classes, the ushers, the greeters, all of those aspects of ministry in the modern church today should be handled by the helps ministry. Now, helps ministry is near and dear to my heart uh, because helps is a great aspect of what the Lord's called me to do to help ministers and ministries in local churches and local ministries. And so it kind of really jumps out at me that they thought this was a pleasing thing. This pleased the multitude. But notice it goes on to say they chose Stephen a man full of faith and the Holy Ghost. So don't diminish these folks, these seven, that were appointed to the helps ministry. These guys were to take care of the daily ministration to the widows, but they wanted to be sure that they were full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Why? Because they're dealing with people directly. And any time you're dealing with people directly, <laughs> you need to be full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. Amen? You need to be walking in love. You need to be demonstrating the love of God toward them and toward their needs. And in fact, you need to be in a position to help people in the helps ministry as much 
as you're helping the ministry gifts in that local church, local ministry, whatever it is you're operating in as a helps minister or in the helps ministry. Do you see that? But notice what it says. They chose these men full of faith in the Holy Ghost and Philip and Prochorus and Nicanor and Timon and Parmenas and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they, the apostles, had prayed, they laid their hands on them. In other words, they ordained them into the helps ministry. This was not a light thing. This was not a, you know, uh, off-the-cuff situation. They didn't think, oh, well, they'll, they'll handle it. Handle it, handle it. You know what I'm saying? No. They said, pick you out some men that are full of the Holy Ghost, full of faith, and then they ordained them into this helps ministry. So they were to handle this supernaturally. So what I want you to see here is the power and influence of the Holy Spirit in the early church to get these things set and operating the way they should. That things be done decently and in order. One of the things pastor has been teaching uh, in our Sunday morning services concerning the spiritual gifts, the, what we call the simple gifts of the Spirit, is that all of those gifts should function in a church service decently and in order. And if you go into 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul makes a point of bringing that out, that it is for the edification of the church that these things operate and operate in a way that brings glory to God and is done decently in order. It's not a free-for-all. And the, the church at Corinth, at Corinth was, <laughs> they were known for having a free-for-all. They were known for being, in effect, out of order. And that's why Paul was bringing correction to them and bringing them into order in terms of their operation of the gifts of the Spirit and the operation of that local church. So our key phrase for the helps ministry should be everything should be done decently and in order. Everything should be done in a fashion that brings glory to God and brings aid and support to the ministry and to the people. Because the folks are there at that local church or at a service even like this that is uh, live on the internet, in any form or fashion that we are ministering, it should be done with clarity. It should be done with uh, precision. It should be done in a way that brings glory to God and that is decent and in order. You know, I mean, that's one reason I apologize for the the lateness of the service tonight and the fact that we, we got started, you know, off, so to speak, on the wrong foot. Kind of a good example of it has to be done decently in order. The expectation is there to do it correctly at the right time. And I apologize for that. Here's the thing. We're human. We make mistakes. And when mistakes happen, we just keep going on and doing what, what's at hand to do and put our hand to it. And the Lord will bless that effort and that heart to do it correctly. Amen? So, notice the result of the Helps Ministry functioning in the helps ministry under the power of the Holy Ghost and th through the faith, the, remember it says they were full of faith, through the faith of, of, uh, of operating according to the Word of God. Verse 7, And the Word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem, which is where they were, greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. In other words, they had results. Results come from doing it properly. Results come from things being done decently and in order. The, you know, everyone has a word or a teaching or a tongue or an interpretation, as it says in 1 Corinthians 14. And everything is done decently and in order. And by doing it that way, the word of God increased. Now, we're going to find out 
in the very next verse here that one of these men that operated in the helps ministry was Stephen. You remember, Stephen is one of the ones in the list. It gives a list of the people's names. Stephen was at the top of that list. The very next verse says, And Stephen, full of faith and power, did wonders and miracles among the people. Now, he did wonders and miracles, but yet he was ordained into the helps ministry. So we see here he gets over into an area of public ministry and in fact begin to operate possibly, potentially, in the evangelist ministry because the evangelist ministry uh, very often operates in terms of signs and wonders and miracles. Okay? We tend to think of an evangelist as somebody that just preaches Jesus and getting people born again. But if you study the New Testament and study the examples we have in the New Testament of the evangelist ministry, then you'll find that the evangelist not only preaches the word concerning salvation, he preaches the word with power and with signs and wonders. Now, a good example of that is Philip the Evangelist. We know Philip is called Philip the Evangelist because later on in the book of Acts, it says Philip the Evangelist had some uh, daughters that ministered in the Word and, and uh, with uh, words from the Lord and so forth. But it actually names him Philip the Evangelist or calls him that. Yet we also see in uh, Acts, I believe it's chapter 8, uh, yeah, chapter 8, verse 5, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. So he's an evangelist. He's preaching Christ. But then it says, And the people, verse 6 of Acts 8, And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many that were taken with palsies and were lame were healed, and there was great joy in that city. So again, here is someone called and ordained as a helps minister that went into public ministry as an evangelist and began to operate in the power and operation of faith in the ministry of signs, wonders, and miracles. My point here is, God will use you wherever you're at, and he'll use you in the areas you're called into if you are faithful to do what God's called you to do. See, you may look at Philip, and you may look at Stephen, and say, well, you know, they were just, you know, picked out to take care of the widow's daily ministration of food. A rather mundane assignment. And, uh, you know, I think about... Uh, Ed Dufresne. When Ed Dufresne started in, in ministry, the Lord spoke to him about getting into the ministry, and he said, Lord, I just can't do that. I just, I can't do that. And the Lord just kept prompting him to get into ministry. And he said, well, I'm just going to go to the church and ask the pastor, what can I do? And the pastor told him, I need somebody to clean the bathrooms. He said, yes, sir, I'll do that. And he didn't just clean the bathrooms. This is what's a great testimony. He did it as unto the Lord. He put together an operation <laughs> to clean those bathrooms. He got them spick and span. He ended up developing it into a business of sanitation business that he actually had other people working for him. He got into doing that unto the Lord so completely that it actually became a business for him. And as time went by, and as he developed, I remember he started a Bible study, and he couldn't teach the Bible study. He just felt like, I can't teach it. I don't, I don't have anything I can say. And so he would play tapes. And he'd say, okay, the study for tonight is, and he'd give the title off the tape, and he'd play the tape, and he'd sit back, you know, and the tape would play. And that was their Bible study. And then eventually the Lord told him, leave your tape recorder at home. I want you to teach. And he went, what? <laughs> so he, in effect, graduated 
into teaching and then into miracle ministry and then on from there and then eventually became a pastor. And his wife, Nancy Dufresne, is still pastoring the church that they started. So, praise the Lord, that development occurred. But he was faithful to do what the Lord called him to do. He was faithful to put his hand to something and let the Holy Spirit motivate him, move him, direct him to do what God called him to do. And that's just one example. Philip is a good example here directly from the Bible. Stephen, another example. Someone that was called as a helps minister, and then shortly thereafter, he's out there doing signs and wonder miracle ministry among the people. And here, concerning Philip, it says there was great joy in that city. There was a visitation of the Lord into that city because Philip was obedient to do what God called him to do. Now, what I'm saying all this, the reason I want to mention all this is I believe God has for us certain things we're to do. You know, Pastor Ed talks about we all have a destiny with the Lord, and I like that. I've, I've latched onto that myself. We all have a destiny of something God has called us to do. He takes your abilities, he takes your talents, and he uses those, but then, better yet, he empowers you with abilities you don't have, talents you didn't have, uh, opportunities you might not have had. He uses a vessel that is open to be used, is my point. So we need to make ourselves available. We need to say, Lord, here am I, send me. You know, if nobody else will do it, you, you can count on me, I'll do it. And you may be saying, but but Dr. Bill, I can't do that. I don't have I don't have the training, I don't have the background, I don't I don't know what to do. Available. That's what you gotta be, is available. Listen. Get your get your catchers out, as Brother Kenneth Copeland always used to say. You know, get your catchers out. Listen to what the Holy Spirit has to say. The power and influence of the Holy Spirit is that he will direct you. He will guide you. He will help direct you into what you're to do. And sometimes it's just a word spoken in due season. Sometimes it's a word that maybe you're at work and somebody says something and you get a little prompting. Mention this testimony in your life. Mention this scripture that you studied out this morning and you got some light on that will help them with their situation. And you do that. And it's just a little thing. But very often you'll find that those little things, those little words, those little thoughts that you can leave with someone will help and minister to them in ways that you just have no idea. I had a situation just last night. I had a uh, a friend of mine. Been we've been friends for years and years and years, decades actually, and uh, he contacted me many years ago, and he said, uh, "Doctor Bill, I, I'm in a situation here. I don't have health insurance. I've got these health issues. The doctors have given me a prognosis that's very uh, uh, serious. I don't know what to do." And I was prompted to give him some scriptures to... Actually, I did a teaching at Faith and Victory Church and sent him the tape of what I was ministering uh, about healing. I gave him those healing scriptures. I gave him uh, a guide to study from. I, I shared some things with him from a natural health perspective concerning some of the things that he could be doing naturally. And he applied those things. And I just heard him last night in a, uh, a group study that I was taking part in with him and some others uh, on the internet, and he gave his testimony about me sharing those simple truths with him and how it changed his situation, how his health issues began to clear up, and what looked like 
a very serious situation that the doctors said, you know, it could go one way or the other. You could not be here in another year or so. And now it's been many, many, many years, and he's doing well, and he's strong and well today. Well, praise the Lord. I mean, you know, it wasn't like I had this great vision, and the Lord told me, go forth and minister to this gentleman. You know, no. I just gave him what I had at hand to do. I made him a tape. I sent him some scriptures, and I told him about a few uh, herbal things that it could help him. And all of that came together and was what he needed in his hour of need. He didn't have any health insurance he could fall back on. He couldn't do some of the things that they were asking him to do because he just didn't have the resources. But he was able to take what I had just given him a few things, and it made a difference in his life. And today, he's sharing that information with others, and they are benefiting from those few things that were shared. So the things that you do, the things that are at hand to do, can make a tremendous difference in people's lives. And you may just get a little, a little nudge, a little prompting to share things. It may not be the Lord appearing in a vision. Very likely it won't be. You may not see an angel. And as a matter of fact, you shouldn't be seeking for that. But very likely it'll be a still small voice, a little prompt, a little nudge, Share this, share that, say this, say that. And it will help people in a very profound way. And you may not ever know about it. I didn't know the depth of what he shared last night, of what all that meant to him. You know, very often we don't hear the end result until many, many years later in some of these situations. Because they're right in the middle of it. They're dealing with it right then. They're not necessarily calling you up and saying, oh, guess what, you know. But later on, as he shared that with me, it, it blessed me to hear that that little prompting and my obedience to obey that little prompting helped him as much as it did. So the same thing is happening in your life. You're getting promptings. You may not know it because you're not listening. You don't have your catchers out. You need to be listening for those promptings. You need to be ready. You need to be fueled up. What do I mean by that? You need to be in the Word of God, studying the Word, listening to the Word, hearing good teaching. Hearing like, for instance, teaching on, on health and healing. So that if you get into a situation where somebody is talking about, well, I'm facing this or facing that, you've got scriptures that you can bring to mind. Scriptures that you can write down and share with them. Just little things. That's what I'm talking about. Little things. The power and influence of the Holy Spirit in your life can make a difference in the lives of others. You may not be called into the fivefold ministry. You know, it says in Ephesians that it's some, some that are called as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, the fivefold ministry. Not all, but some. So it's very likely you may not be called in those areas. Perhaps you are. I don't know. It's between you and the Lord and his promptings. But my point is this. We're all called in the ministry of reconciliation. We're all called to share the blessed hope that we have through the word of God, through the power of God, through the Holy Spirit, and God will use you wherever you are. You may be pumping gas. And somebody comes up. If they don't pump gas anymore, kind of a bad example. I date myself. But the point is, you may be doing something that you consider mundane. And yet, speak that right word at that right moment. And make a difference in somebody's life. Praise the Lord. So, be like these folks in the early church. When somebody comes to you and says, hey, we've got this area of supportive ministry that we need your help in, don't say, oh, well, yeah, I'd rather be on the platform, or I'd rather be playing before the people, or I'd rather be preaching. Just say, whoa, whoa, hold on. They need help in this area. This is something I could put my hand to do and make a difference. 
and then watch how God will say, you're obedient in these small areas, I'm going to give you more responsibility. I'm going to give you more to do. I'm going to layer some things on there. Maybe give you some gifts you need to do it. Some anointings that are required to do it. And the next thing you know, they're talking about you going into the city and hearing and seeing the miracles that you were involved in, and then there being great joy in that city. Hallelujah. Like Philip. Amen. Because let's face it, we're still writing the book of Acts. Amen. You know, if you go to the end of the book of, the book of Acts, go to uh, chapter 28 and the very last verse, as you read along there, it just kind of, you know, stops suddenly. Because it doesn't say, yay, amen, that's it. <laughs> no, we're still writing that book of Acts. The church is the church, whether it's the early church or us today. And we're still writing it. We're still involved in it. The chronicles of what is going on is, are still being recorded in heaven. Hallelujah. So you need to be available. Make yourself available. Make yourself available to what is at hand for you to do. It may not seem like a lot, but it can be quite a lot. Amen? Well, we'll stop a little bit early tonight, <laughs> even though we got started a little bit late, because I want to get into some other things in the upcoming weeks about the power and influence of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life. And I want you to see this as we go through and see how the Lord puts them in situations and places guides them, directs them to do what is at hand to do to bless folks in every area of life. Amen? Trust you enjoyed this tonight. Whether you see it live as it's happening right now or whether you see it on the Facebook page as a video, I trust you enjoy it. We'll see you next time. Remember until then to fulfill the Word of God.